My name is Jana Joester and thank you for joining me today at Axon Radio Pharmacy where we will be doing a reconstitution. As you can see, I'm already in the restricted side of the hot lab because I'm dressed. I've got my gloves on, my dosimeter, my lab coat as well as my overshoes. So if you will join me, then I can demonstrate my reconstitution. Today we will be reconstituting Technetium MDP, which is stable for 8 hours, needs 15 minutes to incubate and is agitated through swirling. The activity that needs to be added is a minimum of 30 millicuries and a maximum of 500 with a minimum volume of 1 milliliter and a maximum of 5 milliliters. Today we have 7 patients to reconstitute for, each will have a dose of 25 millicuries at the calibrated time and we will add one extra dose for our wastage or an emergency case which means that we will have 8 doses to calculate for which is 200 millicuries but due to the bulk production of Axum we will be using the maximum activity and volume which is 500 millicuries in 5 ml to reconstitute the vial as some of these doses are calibrated for later on but I will only be withdrawing the one for 8 o'clock. Okay, so before we can start our reconstitution we first need to remove the MDP from the fridge so that we reach a room temperature and then we also need to inspect the expiry date which will be 1 December 2023 we also just need to check our lot number which is 011220 and MDP can be used mostly for bone scans or for ventilation scans. So we're going to just let it sit out until it reaches through the temperature. So after the illusion has completed we will take the vial with our tongs and then we're just going to measure it in the dose calibrator to see how much we did withdraw. The bulk measured 1.65 curies which is more than enough that we need for our reconstitution so we will withdraw our protectinitate from this vial which is going to place it within the lead pot and seal it nicely for radiation safety. Now that we know the amount of activity within our bulk we can calculate the volume of technetium protectinitate that we need to withdraw for our reconstitution. Okay, so now we are here, we're going to start with the reconstitution. So as you can see, all of my equipment is ready, my syringes and my needles my bulk technician is in this vial. Here's my reconstitution vial, which has reached room temperature. This is where I'll be putting my unit dose inside of. And after reconstitution, this is where I will be placing the MDP vial. And here's my tools. But before we get started, we need to sanitize everything. So we're going to sanitize the equipment before it goes in. And then we're also going to sanitize the laminar flow completely. Before I started, I sanitized my hands. I'm using an alcohol solution as well as a specialized squeegee and always cleaning from the inside outwards. So now that everything has been sterilized we're going to be working inside of the flow cabinet. My hands are also sanitized so I'm not allowed to remove them from the flow cabinet. We'll be working behind our lead shield and over here I've got all of my equipment so I'm just going to prep my syringes real quick before we start. Now I have drawn up the calculated 2.1 milliliters and then we are going to measure this now and as you can see it measures within range. After we have confirmed the amount of technetium protectinitate we have within our syringe we then fill up the volume to meet the 5 ml requirement. From this we can calculate the amount of activity we have in each milliliter and from that we can calculate the volume we need to withdraw for our unit dose of MDP. We're going to place the MDP vial in the lead container. We're just going to clean it off, discard the paper waste, and then we're going to close it up so we can add our measured technetium at an angle into your vial. There and then we also just need to remember to remove the same amount of air that we injected, which will be 5 moles. 
and then we're just gonna discard of this syringe at a later stage. We do not have the facilities to discard radioactive waste within our flow cabinet. So now we're just gonna swirl our MDP to make sure that everything there is fine. And then we're just gonna do a visual inspection really quick to make sure all of our powder has dissolved and it looks good. We are happy. So now we're gonna let this incubate for 15 minutes before we draw our, our patient dose. So the syringe that we used inside that contained our technician that we used for the reconstitution will be disposed of within our bin for radioactive waste. We do not have one inside the flow cabinet. That's why we have it sealed in its container and we can discard it safely. While we are waiting for the 15 minutes to elapse, we can ensure that we did document everything that we have done up until thus far and then we can take this time to prepare the patient labels. 15 minutes have elapsed, we are ready to draw up our unit dose. So before we do that, we're just going to take our tongs to clean off the top side and a little bit of the inside of our lid shift. Discard it in your paper waste. Same with this side. Then I can withdraw the 0.25 milliliters of reconstituted MDP as calculated and quickly measure it. Now I'm just measuring the unit dose, which measured 22 millicuries and is fine for injection. So now that we are happy with our measurements, we're just going to fill it up with saline to be sure that we have the dose that's correct for injection, which is 0.5 mils, and there's no residual activity within the needle. So now we are ready to dispense our unit dose. After we've completed our reconstitution, we just clean the entire airflow cabinet for the next one. Exit the hot lab. After our reconstitution, we first need to remove our gloves. We discard of our gloves in the red bin that is shielded just here around the corner. And then we're going to wash our hands real quick. After completing the hand washing, I have now removed all of my protective clothing and I'm now outside the restricted area of the radio pharmacy and not welcome inside anymore. I still have my dosimeter on as there's still a possibility of radiation exposure. Thank you so much for joining me today in this video. I hope you enjoyed it.